Okay, we're ready to get started. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the call. Um, today, we're going to talk about the in home pop up boutique. And I'm really excited. I was just chatting with these guys earlier. Um, the reason that I want to do this is because we have a lot of new people who are joining our team. And uh, the idea of an in home pop up boutique can seem a little crazy. Uh, seem seem kind of scary and it's really not it's one of those things once you do your first one it's so easy and it is a lot of fun but I think it's good to go through some details and to hear from some other people about how they do theirs um, so that you at least feel really prepared so um, we're gonna go through this grab a pen and paper you may want to take some notes uh, we'll open it up I'm gonna go pretty quickly because I like to do quick trainings and quick meetings and then we'll open it up and if anyone else has anything that they want to share or we can ask questions or anything like that okay so sounds like or it looks like we got um okay we're good all right so the in-home pop-up boutique this is where lula rose business uh the whole business model was really formed um deanne our founder was selling maxi skirts unhemmed maxi skirts uh, pretty much on the back of her vehicle, but uh, she would go into people's homes and sell them this way. And that's how this build business was formed. Um, the way to create lasting relationships with your customers, to learn more about how the clothing fits, how it feels, what people like, uh, is really to do the in-home pop-up. And so uh, it can feel a little intimidating. Sometimes it feels a little bit more safe and not as scary when we just upload pictures and do things on Facebook or on Boutique 360 or Shop the Row or whatever website you might be using. Um, and those are good good things too, but there really is nothing like the in-home pop-up boutique. So let's go through some of the details. Um, first of all, one of the biggest keys to having a successful in-home boutique is your prep. Um, and that is prepping everyone who will be a part of it. So yourself, uh, prepping your hostess and prepping your guests. So um, before you can even do an in-home pop-up boutique, you, you, well, you may decide to do one in your, in your own home. Uh, you may have a hostess that you're doing the boutique for. Uh, whatever it is, you still prepare the same way. Um, the first thing, and I'm just starting to do this, when I have a hostess who is hosting a pop-up boutique, I, the first thing that I talk with them about is, okay, you know, I'm so excited. This is going to be so much fun. I'm going to send you some hostess instructions, et cetera, et cetera. How many items do you want to sell at this pop-up boutique? And they know at this point, because I'm telling them, uh, that for every 10 items that sell, they get one free item. And so ask them, you know, how many items are they hoping for? They've probably seen some of your inventory or they have an idea of some things they're interested in and see what they say. You know, if they say, okay, I would love to get like five free items. Okay, that's amazing. So we need to invite a lot of people and we need to work really hard to get these people to come to your event. So we're gonna promote it, just encourage them, talk to them about in order to do this, this is what we need to do. So you're setting them up to be an active participant in the prep work for this event. Um, this is something that I can either be really good at or I can be really bad at. And the results, I mean, vary greatly. So if I haven't done a good job of helping my hostess, then the pop-up's not necessarily super successful, okay? So um, I send out hostess instructions. And in those instructions, I talk about, um, uh, I want them to wear LuLaRoe for one. And if they don't own any LuLaRoe, then we're gonna kind of set them up with some LuLaRoe when I get there, okay? They are going to have to post in the event that I'm going to create. Uh, posting pictures of either the items they own that they love, their favorite styles, what they're most excited about, um, and it can go on and on and on. You don't want them posting more than like one or two times per day because that's a little much. But those will be in the um, hostess instructions. Uh, I also talk to them about, um, I want them to have good lighting in their home. Uh, we need mirrors. We need a place for them to try clothes on. These are the things that I put in the instructions. And if they don't have a mirror or they don't have a, a, a place for them to try in, which if they have a bathroom, they have a place if they have a bedroom, they have a place. Um, usually they do. But these are the things that we want to chat with them about. Um, 
music. Music is really, really important. I tell them that I, I, I like to have some upbeat music that can be playing during the pop-up boutique. You want it to feel like they're in an actual like fun store. And if, you know, maybe it's a ladies night out and um, you, you just want to have a really fun atmosphere. Okay. So music definitely helps with that. Um, those are some things that we want them to do. They're going to invite their friends and family. They're going to want to invite a lot of people. So they can invite them to the Facebook event. They can make calls. They can send Facebook messages. They can text. They can call people on the phone. Um, the goal, and you want to keep reminding them so that they don't look at you as a crazy sales lady, is the goal is to get them as many free items as they want, okay? So um, say, in order for you to do this, this is what we need to do. And that's kind of how your conversation is directed every time you talk with them. Um, now, as far as you, as the LuLaRoe consultant, you're going to, this is what I do. Some people do different things. So when I say this is what you need to do, just know that I'm saying this is what I do. You can do it however you want, but this is what has worked for me and some others and others can chime in too um, when we're done about what works for them. But I create a Facebook event. So you need to make sure that you're friends with your uh, hostess on Facebook. You create the event, you add them as a host. So you have two hostesses, you and, um, well, yeah, two hosts, you and your hostess. Uh, and what you're going to do is I have a description of LuLaRoe, who I am, what's going to happen at the pop-up. I have that saved in the notes section on my computer, and I just copy and paste that, insert their name, and I post that on every single description of every event that I do. Okay, so it's always the same. I just change the names around. Sometimes I'll play with it a little bit, just if I know there's a lot of people who, same people who've been invited to a lot of these, I'll change it just a little bit. Um, and then what you're going to do is you can create the event uh, a month out if you want, but don't post in it until like, you can have the description, but don't post in it until maybe a week or a week and a half before. It gets to be a lot when you start posting every single day. And please don't post more than like twice a day. I never even do twice a day. At most, I do once a day because when I am invited to things and people are posting more than once, I'm not going. You've annoyed me and I cannot handle it. And I know that that sounds harsh, but if it's annoying me, then I know that it's annoying other people. So be careful with how much you're posting. Once a day is great. You can schedule those posts in uh, some type of program like Tiny Torch or um, whatever you choose to use. So that way, you're not having to actually go in every single day and schedule those things. Um, but you want to let them know a little bit about um, LuLaRoe. There are images that you can use in the back office for these things. You can create your own. Let them know how LuLaRoe works. Uh, let them know the styles that you carry, what type of styles you'll be bringing. Um, you can go live also in the event and chat with them. Let them know who you are. Say hi. Talk to them. You know, maybe, maybe you're going to say, hey, bring a friend. And you'll be entered into the drawing for a free pair of leggings. or. Um, for every friend you bring or, you know, whatever you want to say, you can do little incentives like that. Uh, I did those a lot in the beginning, or I'd say, you know, if the pop-up boutique, I would schedule my pop-up boutiques for an hour and a half. So if it started at seven, I would say I'm doing a drawing at 7 30 PM and that, uh, for a free pair of leggings. And that was to get people to show up by seven 30 at least so that they're not all showing up at the end of the pop-up boutique. And then you're there for the whole night. Okay, so those are some things that you can try. Um, okay, in case I forget to mention this, I'm just I'm going to put it here. During the event when you're checking people out, another thing that you can do, and I know a lot of you have started to do this, is um, give them like $5 off when they bring their phone up to you and show that they've joined your uh, private shopping group. Okay, so um, that's a great way to get new people and make sure that they go go to your page because then they may shop your online boutiques as well. Um, when I, about a week or a week and a half, you know, when I start doing those posts on Facebook, I check in with my hostess just a couple times, um, see how it's going, um, get a rough idea for RSVPs, encourage her to text and call and reach out to some of the people that she's inviting. Um, something else that I have in my hostess uh, prep document is um, making sure there's no pets. 
around. I mean, we love pets, but we want to make sure that they are, you know, in a kennel or, or somewhere else during the pop-up boutique and, um, and, and talk a little bit about food too. You don't want to have a lot of food or that becomes kind of the focus of the pop-up boutique, you know, something simple, even if, and maybe they don't want to do food, but I mean, water and mints would actually, I mean, that's probably okay. Most people do something, um, but tell them not to go overboard on the food. I put that in the instructions too, but I like to go over some of those things with them. Uh, a couple days prior to the boutique, you want to check in with them again and double check those numbers, see where they're at. I've kind of got to the point where if I'm driving to a pop-up boutique and only two people have RSVP'd, I'm probably going to say, hey, should we reschedule so that we can make sure you're earning free or more free clothes or something like that. It's a lot of work to haul all, all of you. I don't tell them this, but it's a lot of work to haul all of your clothes to someone's house if two people are coming. You can still do it. And in the beginning, I did. Um, and sometimes I would still sell a decent amount of clothing. And sometimes I wouldn't at all. Um, but kind of decide if that's something you want to do. Never tell them it's not worth it. Just say, we want you to earn a lot of free clothes. So if it would work better to reschedule this, you know, let's, let's do that. Um, okay. So we're prepped. We've done, uh, the work for getting people there. Uh, your hostess knows what's going to happen. Let's kind of talk about that day of, so you have a pop-up boutique at seven o'clock. Try to, I always try to be there at least an hour before it takes a little bit to kind of get the feel for, um, the home. You know, you want to set up, you're going to set up your racks, or maybe you have tubs, you know, however you're doing this, you need to set up your leggings somehow. Um, you can hang up all your clothes, plan on an hour. That's what I, I always do. I really should probably do more, but an hour is just kind of what works for me right now. Um, and make sure they know you're going to be there an hour early too. That's in your hostess instructions. Um, when you get there and even on the way, maybe send them a picture saying, Hey, my car is full of these amazing clothes and I would love your guys' help um, unloading. Uh, if you're able to bring somebody with you, that is such a benefit and so worth it, especially if you know there's going to be quite a few people at the pop-up. It's really good to have people help you set up, uh, help you unload. Uh, it's great to have someone there to take clothes that people have tried on and they're going to hang back up and put them in the wrong spots because that happens every single time. You know, if you have someone who can take clothes out of the changing room or changing area or help people find outfits, what I like to do, and not everybody can do this, I would rather have somebody there to help check people out. So if you have someone who can do that, that is a great, great benefit. Um, and that frees you up to be able to help customers find outfits um, to add another layer to their clothing, um, chat a little bit more about LuLaRoe. It lets you kind of uh, get to really know the people. When you're checking out and if it gets busy, that could be your station and that's the only place you get to go. And so you do miss out on some of the customer interaction other than when they're paying. Um, but encourage your hostess to really help people uh, find um, uh, you know, if they if they pick up a Julia dress, help them to find a Sarah or a Joy to go with it. Or oh, it's cold. Do you want a pair of leggings to wear under that? You know, encourage them to help them find layers as well. Uh, one thing: be careful of because I've caught myself doing this, and I've seen some other people do this. Careful not to follow people around and constantly. Hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? Let them shop a little bit too. We used to always joke there was a store in the mall that we would like go in and see if we could make it to the back of the store and back out before someone would talk to us because it would never happen. It was so annoying. Like they were, they all were like commission based and it was like this joke. We used to do that in high school just to see if we could do it. And I remember that and I know that I never want to be that person. So, um, let them breathe a little bit, let them shop and, and then ask them if they want help. And sometimes people don't and that's okay. Uh, wait till they go in to try something on and then maybe offer some other ideas uh, some people want help. And usually when they want help, I just say, okay, tell me a little bit about the colors that you like to wear. Or tell me, tell me about what you do for work. Do you dress up? Do you not, you know, get a feel for, for how they dress and that kind of thing. So that's kind of your goal while you're at the pop-up. Um, you also want to be sharing, uh, well, number one, be super excited. 
even if you're having a really bad day or you don't want to be there or you're mad at the hostess for doing something dumb, like letting your cat sit on top of your clothes or you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. Be happy, be excited. Uh, you're you're kind of, you kind of got to be the life of the party. So put your smile on, wear makeup, do your hair, put some jewelry on, make sure you wear deodorant, seriously, because you're probably going to be doing a lot of lifting and running around like a crazy person. And if you're like me, sometimes I get nervous for no real reason, you know, just make sure that you've groomed yourself properly too. Um, gum, mints, maybe not gum, but mints. Um, but your goal is really to be the brightest part in those people's day. You know, maybe it's Friday, maybe they worked all week and they hate their job and you're going to be the person who's there smiling, not annoyingly, but with a really, with really good intentions, good heart to really help these people feel gorgeous, you know, to feel comfortable, to feel excited about being a woman, you know, that's really your goal. And so have fun with it. Enjoy it. Um, sometimes when I'm not necessarily in the mood, I think to myself, okay, if I'm here for an hour and a half. I can do anything for an hour and a half. Okay. So just be excited, enjoy your time and, um, let uh, those people get to experience all that is LuLaRoe because you loved it. You fell in love with it. And so your goal is to show them what you love about it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I still carry my clothes in with Ikea bags. Uh, when I first started, I used tubs, but um, I keep everything on hangers. I fold them into the Ikea bags and then I just haul them back out, hang them on the racks once I get to the pop-up boutique. The back of my vehicle is completely packed and I fill it about as packed as I can. Um, I stack my Ikea bags full of clothes on top of each other and sometimes my racks are underneath, sometimes they're on top, just depends on how I pack that day. Uh, leggings, I switch those around quite a few times. I use um, suitcases right now, like old vintage suitcases and that's how I bring my leggings. So I can pretty much set them anywhere. Sometimes I look for a couch to set those on. And, um, and then I have my racks uh, all kind of scattered out throughout the room or a couple of rooms. Um, I try not to have my clothes by wherever the food and drink is. Um, and I usually have, uh, like I'll carry usually in my hand, I have a little price sheet. Like I have a price sheet that says all the prices. And then you flip it over and they can keep track of their sizes on it. So while, when I first meet them, I'm, I, it's usually when they come in the door, um, are you familiar with LuLaRoe? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. This is how LuLaRoe works. And here's a price sheet for you. And on the back, if you want, you can keep track of your sizes. And at that point, I usually say, I do Tuesday online boutiques on my, face, on my Facebook page. And so try on all these sizes while they're here so you know which sizes are going to fit you. Um, and then make sure they understand that I can't order. I usually say, I can't order. You know, I don't get to pick out these prints. Um, what you see is what you get. Um, when I get them, I don't even know what they're going to look like. And so as they're trying things on and you've told them that they're just figuring out their sizes, they're going to find some things they really like. And so um, anyway, you can also, another thing that you can do too, if, if people are kind of slow to try things on, you can offer a discount, say, hey, $5 off for everybody who tries on four different styles today, okay? Those are little things that you can use as you're doing the pop-up if, if people are kind of like, hmm, I don't really feel like doing this or, you know, whatever. Encourage your hostess to try things on during the pop-up if you need to. Um, usually when they see her try things on, they get excited. Uh, when they see a group of people doing stuff, encourage people who come out of the dressing room to look in the mirror. You know, if it's something you don't like, don't, don't pretend like you like it. I mean, and, and don't tell them you don't like it or whatever. Say, hey, you know, maybe they have a Carly on. It just doesn't look right. You know, maybe say, you know what? I wonder if you might like the Amelia or something like that. You know, get them to try something else and maybe more flattering on them or, or, or put a Joy or a Sarah over it or a kimono or, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, Krista, did you bring all your leggings? I've heard that we don't need to, but I was afraid that if I, I used to always bring all of my leggings. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need more because I've upped um, the number that I carry, but I do bring as many as I can. Uh, when you dress yourself for the LuLaRoe pop-up boutique, don't wear leggings and a top. I mean, sometimes I'll wear leggings under my dress, but I like to wear my higher end items. 
And um, I usually try to wear three pieces. So like if I'm wearing an Amelia, which I often wear an Amelia dress because I love the Amelia, um, I will wear that. A lot of times I'll wear leggings under it. Um, but tights look really nice too. You don't have to do leggings. And I usually wear a Sarah because I know those are, they're, they're expensive and I make a lot of money when I sell those. And I know that I look nice when I wear those. And so I try to wear them. Uh, when you're wearing an Irma and leggings, you're probably going to sell a lot of those. And that's great. But truthfully, the leggings and the Irma sell them themselves. You don't need to put them on you. Um, if you have a mannequin, bring a mannequin along and you can put another dress on your mannequin. Uh, sometimes I'll wear maxi. Sometimes I'll wear leggings under the maxi. You know, I live in the cold part of the country. And so sometimes I do like to show how I can put layers on. Um, I'm always Amelia leggings because going, yeah, that's exactly what I do. That's funny. I probably taught you that. That's funny. Um, okay, hold on here. Back to my notes. Okay, so I set up my um my racks and I have all of the style labels that I hang. And then on my hangers, I have the little sizes, those little sizing clips that say like small, medium, large. Here I'll just I have some right here, so I might as well show you. I didn't always use these, and to be honest, it looks a lot nicer if you don't use them. But, man, they're nice to have, and you know when things are in the wrong spot, because it's there's nothing worse than when all your clothes are not in the right size areas, and people are like, what do you have for small? I can't find them, you know what I mean? So I do like to use these. Uh, you don't have to, but I know there are a few of us on this team that use these as well. Um, okay, covered that. Oh, when you first set up your clothes, I know I'm kind of jumping all over, but I hope you're able to follow this. When I first set up my clothes, I do, I don't actually have people help me set up my clothes because I want them in order by size and I don't know, I'm weird about it. Unless it's somebody that I know well, or if I brought a helper or if they've been to a lot of my pop-ups, then I would say, yeah, you could help, you know, because they'll know how to do it. And people want to help and that's wonderful, but that part is a little bit more difficult. Same with when I pack stuff up because I pack, I grab um, my big sizes first, pack it on the bottom of the bag and I kind of do it that way. So that way when I pull them out, they're all in order too. All right, I might be saying that wrong. No, yeah, that's right. Big sizes first. Um, and so I don't have them pack up either because I smash a lot into those Ikea bags. And when other people pack them up, they put like just a few things in each bag. And then all of a sudden I'm totally out of room and I have a lot of clothes left that need to go in bags. So I usually do those on my own. Um, consider getting business insurance I'm, while I'm thinking of that. Um, usually whoever you have your homeowner insurance through, they can, you, they can figure out that for you only because I always have kind of had the fear of like, what if I drop this rack on their really nice, beautiful hardwood floor or something like that? And it puts a dent in the floor. Um, that has not happened to me, but, uh, it could. And it just, I just think it's good to have that covered. Or if you have a fire in your home, you know, and your clothes are part of it. Although that's probably covered. I don't know. I have it. It's not very expensive, but just check into that. Uh, the checkout process First of all, take a picture of your event, you know, while people are shopping, if there's a lot of people there and it's really exciting and fun, I mean, you could do a live video or take a picture, then post that on your VIP group, uh, your shopping group or social media pages. Say, we're having so much fun at this pop-up uh, and, or maybe you're gonna post it afterward and say, our hostess, Sarah, earned four free items. She got an Amelia, a Joy, or whatever, all for hosting a pop-up in your home, you know, that kind of encourages other people to consider hosting as well. Um, but when you are checking out, um, I love, if I can have somebody help to check out, that is the best. Most of the time it doesn't happen for me. Excuse me. It's usually me who's checking people out, but that is a great time as you're checking them out to say, um, are you interested in earning free clothes? And it's a real simple yes or no, but that's a great time to book a pop-up boutique for that customer. Uh, that's also a great time to have them join your VIP page and then give them a $5 discount. So keep those two things in mind when you're checking people out. You will also have people who are very interested in LuLaRoe. If they end up buying like 10 items, 
oh my goodness, you should totally become a consultant because this is what I do when I shop my own stuff, you know? Keep it kind of lighthearted, kind of fun, but that may, they may really be interested in that or it may, they may think about it. So those are some things that you can say when you're helping people to check out. Um, when I check out my customers, I, I use right now Boutique 360 and so that has all of my inventory on it. So when I check people out, I need to make sure that I delete those pictures so that at my next online sale, I'm not selling the items that I just sold. So I create a pop-up. It doesn't post to my VIP page. And I just, in, within that pop, I just hit claim on all the items. Then actually at the end of the night, I can go back and see everything I sold too. Uh, when I, I put their items in the bag, I give them my business card and on the back of my business card is a punch card. So for every 10 items, uh, they get anything for free. And I send those to people who buy stuff online as well. So I put that in their bag. I also put um, a double sided little like four by six sheet or something like that, that says my return policy. And I tell them, here's my return policy uh, and washing instructions. Okay. So I put that in the bag as well. I thank them for shopping. I um, tell them I'm so excited for them. Hey, you should take a picture of yourself and post it on my Facebook page. I try to say that to people when they check out. So more things to keep in mind. Uh, when I first started, I would do boutiques and Sometimes they would get really long because I didn't close them. <laughs> I didn't say, okay, we're done. You know, people just hang out and keep shopping, which is, is fun. But uh, the neat thing about the pop-up boutiques is, well, the neat thing and, and the thing to keep in mind is you still have a life. You, you still want to be with your family or your friends. And so keep them short because it's still going to take you an hour to set up, maybe an hour to pack up, hopefully not that long. Um, by saying you're going to be there for an hour and a half, stick to that. Once it's 15 minutes before the pop-up boutique is going to close, announce to everybody, hey guys, the boutique's going to end in 15 minutes, so make your last selections or whatever you need to say. It also keeps those customers remembering, man, the next time I go to one of these, I need to get here right away because I want to get those prints first. Okay, so keeps it short, keeps it fast and fun. Um, there is nothing like a crazy boutique, which a lot of you have done where just like a ton of people come and it's a crazy, chaotic, wonderful disaster. And it's so much fun. And you end up selling a lot because it's fast and people are really, really excited. And so you want to keep that excitement going. Uh, sometimes when I'm done, I am exhausted <laughs> because it was so much work. And sometimes it's just so much work being up and positive and happy. You know, some people get done and they're completely energized. And that does happen to me too, where I walk out of that pop-up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can take on the world. I feel so great. Other times I had to be an actress and that's okay. But just know that you may be the brightest part of their day, okay? So work for that. Um, some people announce every, let's say your party has sold 10 items on that 10th item. If, if you want, you can announce to everybody, you guys, our hostess, Sarah, just earned her free Amelia. You guys are awesome. Yay. You can announce that so that they kind of know, oh, that was fun or, oh, that's cool or whatever. I've never done that, but it seems kind of like it would be fun. When I'm done with a pop-up, I thank my hostess so, so, so much. Uh, depending upon how it went or what I'm feeling, I may say, hey, we should book one of these again in three months and bring out your calendar and book another one in three months. That's a great way to fill up your calendar with pop-up boutiques. I also have started posting after the event. I do not post this before the event, but afterward I say I'll post, oh, we had so much fun. Here's a picture from the event. I know a lot of you live out of town or weren't able to make it. Here is our shopping link. If you want to shop, now you can post it so that they can shop right away, or you can invite them to join your VIP group and shop at your next online boutique. If for some reason all those people sell, if you sell another 10 items from those guests, give your hostess another item, you know, they'll be excited and they'll promote the online boutique too. And another thing that happens is the people who came to the boutique may say, Oh my gosh, that Randy that I got, I love it. I've already worn it twice this week. I need to get another one. You know, now that they've played with some of the items, they may want more. Okay. 
So you're done. You're packing up all your stuff. Um, there's always such a relief once I get all my stuff in the car and I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so crazy. And usually I'm thinking, what should I go eat? Like, that's what I do. I like had this weird routine. I'm like, I'm going to go eat something now. And part of it's because I live outside of a small, I live in the country. I live in the outside of a small town where there really aren't restaurants, like seriously. And so I'm always like, I'm usually in another city doing a pop-up. So I just like to eat something afterward. I typically don't eat the hostess's food. Sometimes I do. Uh, when you get home, you know, make sure, just kind of look over your event. Um, and remember that, well, pretty soon we're going to be able to get our money deposited really fast. The goal then is to reorder everything that you sold. Okay. And to do that as soon as you can, as soon as you have 30 items, I think it's still at 30, uh, reorder. And that is what I do for pop-up boutiques. Now my goal right now, not my goal, but what I'm trying to focus on is doing more of them in my own home, which changes things a little bit. And you gotta work a little bit harder to get people to come to your house. Hostesses are usually okay to come into your house, um, but their friends may be a little bit more hesitant. And if, um, you know, had I not, because of where I live, it can be a little bit more difficult, but if I didn't have, you know, 15, 1600, pieces and in inventory, they may not want to come out. Um, and I solely will keep growing that, not at this time, but the more inventory you have, the more you'll probably sell. So anyway, that was a lot. There are other people who do things different. I just wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of what I do so that um, you feel a little bit more confident in whatever, whichever way that you want to do your pop-up boutique. And I know there are a lot of people joining. Um, our team, which is amazing, amazing. And uh, yeah, when I started, there was nobody around me even. So I didn't, I had never even been to a pop-up boutique. I didn't even own any LuLaRoe when I started, you guys, seriously. Like I was really interested in the business and the clothes look amazing, but I didn't own any. I just jumped in. So who has some questions or thoughts? I know a bunch of you um, do these a little bit different than I do. So if there's anything you want to add or share, let me know. Let us know. Oh, I do have something I was going to show you guys too. Let me see. I got um, a new light. This was recommended by Robin. It really does make a big difference. I said that it makes my face look really gross right now. So here's my new light. Uh, it's called Diva Ring. It is not a birth control form, but hold on. I'm going to show you the back so you can actually see. Is that crazy? So it's pretty cool. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I used it for my live sale, the last one that I did, and it worked really, really, really well. You can put your phone right in the middle or your iPad right in the middle of that ring. So anyway, and when you do live sales, you're kind of doing it the same way that you do your in-home pop-up boutiques. You're still really excited and happy and um, yeah, I've had a few days where I wasn't excited and happy doing my live sales. And then I rewatched the video and I was like, that's bad. I would not want to be a part of that. So I had to change. Any questions or thoughts, you guys? Where do you purchase your LuLaRoe bags? Good question. So when they're available, <laughs> that's where I've gotten them. Um, when they're in Audrey and when they're out, that's where I've gotten them. When they have been available, I've gotten, I've tried to order a lot of them. But otherwise, Amazon has really nice bags. You can get, um, the first time I got like brown, cute little boutique bags, but I actually really like the white or pink, um, I don't know what the exact, it is. They look just like the LuLaRoe bags without the label. So Amazon has just millions of them. The bags have been available a lot lately. Um, I've ordered them every order if they if they're available just to okay. Have them. So good. They're still up that I know of. Um, I haven't done a lot of in homes. I mean, I did a lot at my home, but um, I do a lot of events. <laughs> 
So when I take my stuff, I have all my leggings in those wooden crates that you can get like at anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, that I have, I actually have two crates for one size right now and one for tall and curvy and then one for tweens and one for kids, small, medium. So yes. each crate had, you know, and then I leave them up up here too. They're easy for storage. They stack nice and I can just stack those in my car and go. Um, so that is one thing I use. And then I don't use those little sizer rings because I didn't want to spend the money on them. I use colored duct tape. Okay. <laughs> Just so another option if people don't want to use it. So you can make that look nice. If I did it, yeah. it would look chunky and gross. But yours looks nice. <laughs> it took me a while. Like I was, I found one of my very first ones in here when I was doing them. Which I did just, I just folded it over so you can see like the edge on it. But now I fold it in half to here and then I fold it back over. So. I have a little key on my window that people look at then when they're here or when I have the but key is a gold lens in case any of you didn't know. Very, very, very gold. <laughs> very awesome. We were thankful for that. Uh Kristen, I did my last one. After I hit post, I was like, I was off my game. I've done that too. Or like I've done a live sale where I was like I like I was like talking, but like I, I don't even think I comprehended what I was saying. Like I was so but it's real and it's fine. Uh I think I shared this on our last video too, but if you ever have somebody who people love to be a part of LuLaRoe, like so bring a friend to your papa boutique to help you with, or have a friend help you with your live sale. Maybe you're going to give them a free item or free leggings or, you know, whatever, whatever you decide to do. They love that. My friends love that. And people are always like, when's your next live sale? Maybe I can help. Sometimes you're going to say, mm, you know, I don't think so, but that's okay. Find help. It makes doing your pop-up boutiques a lot easier. Um, I usually have my husband load my car for me. Not that I can't do it because I did it for like the first six months by myself, like, 600 700 pieces and um and then unloaded it always by myself maybe maybe we should do uh i feel like we should probably all have gym memberships <laughs> and chiropractic on uh, care on speeddell no seriously though it does make a difference keep your back strong <laughs> if you're going to be doing a lot of lifting but my husband packs my car um sometimes he's gone to pop-ups with me and they are amazing i really love to have I'm there. So, I mean, it's kind of weird. They're not like weird about it, but like he's chatty and it helps. And, um, he does a really good job. I mean, he has no idea what any of the clothing is called, but he's like, Oh, here you go. This looks neat. I mean, then that's fine. Um, my friends love to do it and I really appreciate their help because lifting all that can be difficult. And yeah, having someone help you put clothes away is really nice too. Anyone else? Any questions or thoughts? Okay. We'll end it there. You guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget about our training call at three. Until time. Also, I will not be here next week because I will be cruising. So there is no training call next week, and I'll post it on the page as well. Um, what else? I think that's it for right now. Remember the upcoming um, trainers and coaches. Well, Rebecca is a trainer in the queue, which I mentioned, I think, before she even got on. So keep that in mind. The um, next trainer event is in March, March 16th, Rebecca. So keep that in mind. And then there's a coaches. Some of you could hit coach. That's possible, right? Maybe. Well, maybe I can. That will be March 15th. And then also preparing your budgets this year. Remember convention. Okay. Really important and a lot of fun. So keep that in mind. And that is all. Have a wonderful day, you guys. And thanks for being a part of this meeting.